Hello friends, this video on mensuration part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Introduction, Perimeter versus Area, Trapezium, Gender Quadrilateral, Rhombus and Polygon. Now let us look at some scenarios that we come across in our day to day life. For example, you have a field maybe in your native town or village and you want to fence the field. That means you want to put a boundary on that field. So how would you put that boundary? I mean, uh, let's say that you need to bring the raw materials to do the fencing around the field. Now, how much raw material would you need? So how do you know that? So in order to know that, you need to find out the entire length of the boundary because only when you know the entire length, you would know, you would know how much of material do you need to make that boundary. So how do you find the length? So that is something which we will focus in this lesson. Let's look at one more example. Let's say this is your room and you want to get a carpet flooring done for the room. So what do you need to measure in this case? Because you, you again need to know, right, that uh, what should be, how much big or small the carpet has to be. So in order to do that, you need to know the area of the floor. That means how much area does the floor cover? So this entire area will decide how, what should be the size of the carpet that you need to do the flooring. Let's say this is your door and you want to laminate the door. So in order to laminate the door again, you should know what is the total area of the door so that you can arrange for materials to get it laminated. Right. So what are we talking about in all these examples? So in the first example, we were talking about the length of the boundary. So whenever we talk about the boundary alone, we are basically talking about perimeter. And when we are talking about the entire space that is covered by that particular object, for example, in case of the door or in case of the floor, at that time, we are talking about area. And in this lesson, we are not only going to talk about perimeter and area of some simple shapes, but also about some more generic shapes. Let's look at this example. So here you have a wire which is in the shape of a square. So if I ask you that, okay, I need a wire such that I can make it in the shape of this square. So how much length of the wire would be needed to make the square? So in that case, again, what do you need to know? You need to know the total length of the boundary. So if you are able to find out the total length of the boundary, you have basically found out the total length of the wire with which you have made this square. So here also, since you are dealing with the boundary, you are basically talking about perimeter. So we have already learned about perimeter and area of a few shapes like squares and rectangles in our previous class. So here we will learn about how to find perimeter and area of slightly more complex shapes like polygons and general quadrilaterals. So very quickly, once again, perimeter versus area. So when it comes to perimeter, it is the boundary of a closed figure. So here on the screen, you, sh you see many different shapes. You see a triangle, rectangle, square, rhombus, hexagon so you see different shapes but when you look at each of these shapes the black boundary that you have the black line denotes the entire boundary and the total length of this boundary is the perimeter whereas when we talk about area it is the region occupied by the closed figure so for example in all of these images, the colored portion represents the area. For example, the orange colored portion represents the area of the triangle. The yellow colored region represents the area of this rectangle. The green region is the area of the square and so on. So that is how we differentiate between perimeter and area. Now we have already learned about perimeter and area of some basic shapes, for example, a square. So what is the area or and perimeter of a square? So in case of a square, length of all the sides are equal. So let's assume that length of each side is L. In this case, the area of the square would be L square, that is L into L. 
and what would be the perimeter perimeter is sum of four sides so that becomes 4 times l rectangle how about rectangle here opposite sides are equal in length so if this is l this is also l if this is breadth that is b then this is also b so in case of a rectangle area is equal to length into breadth and perimeter is equal to 2 into length plus breadth so again whenever you want to find the perimeter it is just the sum of all the sides so in case of square and rectangle perimeter is sum of all the four sides and from that we deduce these formulae parallelogram so parallelogram is that quadrilateral where the opposite sides are parallel so in case of a parallelogram if you talk about its area its area is base into height so that's the area of a parallelogram where this is the base and this is the height so this base into height would be the area and what about the perimeter so perimeter would be sum of four sides a triangle now in case of triangle you have many different types of triangle you can have a scalene triangle equilateral triangle isosceles triangle right angle triangle so there are many different types of triangle but the generic formula to find out the area of a triangle is half into base into height why is that that's because you can always divide a parallelogram into two triangles like right so when you look at this parallelogram you know with a, with the diagonal you can always divide it into two triangles so the area of a triangle is always half the area of the parallelogram that is half into base into height where for this triangle this is the base and this is the height because this is a right angle triangle and in case of this triangle if this is the base then this is the height the perpendicular drawn from the opposite vertex so this is how we find out the area and what about the perimeter so in case of a triangle perimeter would be equal to sum of the three sides and finally we have a circle how about a circle so circle is not a polygon so we really do not have sides here but still when we talk about area area of a circle is given by pi r square where r is the radius of the circle and what about the perimeter so perimeter in case of a circle is known as circumference so that is just a term which is specially given to the perimeter of a circle that is the total length of this boundary of the circle which is given by 2 pi r where r again is the radius of the circle so these are some of the shapes for which we have already learned about their perimeter and area and how do we make use of them in our day to day life. So in this lesson we are going to talk about a few more shapes and going to learn about how to deal with their perimeter and area. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.